Hey guys, I have a fun St. Patrick's Day tutorial for you today and I'm using this new gnome cookie cutter. I see so many possibilities with this cutter. Definitely a garden gnome is coming in the future, but today I'm going to turn it into an adorable little gnome leprechaun. Let's cookie it up. I'm outlining the cookie using a leaf green piping icing and tip number two. I do outline that hat, leaving lots of room for the gnome's nose, so I definitely add a deep curve where the hat meets the head. Now I'll outline the gnome's shirt using white icing and his pants using a neon green piping icing. If you're looking for more details on the color palette used on these cookies, check out the blog post on flowerbox.com. Now let's get this flooded in. I'll flood the shirt in first and allow that section to dry. After that shirt dries for about an hour, I'll flood in the pants using the neon green flood and the hat using the leaf green flood. I like my flood icing to be a 10 second icing. If you need tips on making royal icing consistencies, Google Cookies 101 on flowerbox.com to watch the videos. Now after those sections have a chance to dry, we're going to add the beard for the gnome. Now because this is a leprechaun gnome, this beard is going to be orange. And I just add a little guide dot and bring that beard shape down through the cookie, adding a piped line at the top just to close off this area before I flood in generously. If you need to pop any bubbles, get your scribe in there and pop away. Then let that beard dry before we add the details. Now, anytime I'm using a food marker on the cookie, I do like to let that base icing dry for about four hours. Otherwise, I find the tip of the marker will poke through the surface of the icing. So here I'm just creating this really simple plaid on the hat using a black marker. I'm just adding double black lines vertically and then I'll add a single black line horizontally and that'll start off this plaid design. Now I'm going to mix some wedding gold with the color solution, this is from the Sugar Art, and you can find these on flowerbox.com. And I'm going to use this to paint on some gold accents on the hat to finish off the plaid look. I added just a dash of the color and a few drops of the color solution. That's enough for what we're going to be using. I have a number zero silver white brush, which is a really nice fine point brush. And I'm just gonna add some horizontal lines with this shimmery solution, and then I'll add a couple of vertical lines. If you notice that your lines are getting a little bit lost, just go ahead and paint over those just to make sure that that gold accent is visible. If you've never used a luster dust before, here's a tip. Before you wash out your small mixing dish, just clean out all of that dust. All that alcohol has evaporated out and the dust is left remaining. And you can scrape that back into the jar before you wash your mixing dish. That way you don't waste any of that precious luster dust. Now let's add the details. I have a tip number 44 on my black icing and I will add that nice wide stripe across the gnome's hat. 
Then I have a flood icing using sienna color and I'm adding a large dot. I like using the flood because it'll stay nice and rounded. So I'm adding just a large dot for the nose and two small dots for the hands. Then I switch tips to tip number two and add two teardrop shaped feet. Now I'm adding a buckle on the hat. I have a lemon yellow piping icing in my bag and I'm going to also add two small little wee buckles on the feet just to add a little extra leprechaun flair. Allow all of those details to dry and we're ready to add some stripes to the leprechaun shirts. Now I love these food doodler markers. They actually come in all colors of the rainbow. So here I'm using a fine tip orange marker just to add the stripes to this shirt. I find this is much quicker and easier than trying to do a wet on wet flood. Once all the stripes are added, we're ready to paint the gold on the buckles. Again, I'm using that wet and gold with a couple drops of color solution to add the gold accents. Don't forget the buckles on the shoes. And for our final detail, I have a tip number two on my black icing and I'm adding that cute little side smile. And this cute leprechaun gnome is ready for St. Patrick's Day. Now, if you're looking for more details on baking these cookies and decorating, definitely check out the blog post on flowerbox.com. You can also find the cookie cutter there as well. And I hope you enjoy making these really fun cookies for St. Patrick's Day. Until next time, happy decorating.